Hey guys, Ryan at GPI. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, next topic in our knowledge series, which is uh, a big topic. Uh, we get this question a lot, and we we see a lot of people go the wrong way uh, in this selection, and that is camshaft selection for Gen 5 LT engines. Not necessarily just LT1. LT1 we're going to specifically cover today, but this is... Uh, this pertains to the L83 truck engines, L86 engines, LT4s, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cam selection is is a bit more picky on the direct injected engines. You have to be, you know, really careful um, to not go too big for your combination. So, some of the main things to consider that we consider when we try to uh, put you in a camshaft or spec a build for you um, is what kind of compression ratio are we going to be running and we take in consideration static compression and dynamic compression um, RPM type or RPM and manifold type you know where is this where are we going to operate this combination what are you trying to do as far as usage uh, is it strictly race only is it a street strip combo? Um, is it an M6 car or is it an auto? If it's an auto, what are we doing for torque converter? Um, you know, the right converter for your setup is important in helping us uh, determine what we're going to do with the camshaft. And lastly, um, BBT. Um, should I keep it? No in most setups. Uh, mainly because the LT engine doesn't do a good job of controlling the cam timing um, with higher spring uh, pressures that you need to be able to run that higher RPM. It also eats up piston and valve clearance on the intake side when you have the cam advanced that much further. So there are a couple downsides for the VVT and the LT platform um, that, that really make it not beneficial for a performance application. Um, so, as we were talking, static compression and dynamic compression, these are huge factors. Uh, one of the best benefits of the Gen 5 LT engine, one of the contributing factors of why it makes such great power. Um, stock, this thing's 11 half to 1 with about a 9 to 1 static or dynamic compression. Uh, like we talked about in the previous video, dynamic compression takes into account when the intake valve closes. So the later it closes, the lower that number is going to be. The earlier it closes, the higher that number is going to be. So, you know, that's about 190 cranking compression, uh, 190 PSI cranking compression. And why am I even talking about that? That's something easy uh, to be able to check on an engine. Um, to have that data to know maybe you don't have all the math behind your combination and you don't know about what your dynamic compression is and there's a good calculator on Wallace Racing uh, that, that will help you figure dynamic compression and your approximate cranking compression ratio or a uh, cranking pressure the uh, the cranking pressure is is a bit of a variable it's going to depend on the temperature of the engine, the condition of the engine and the ring package, um, and also the speed that the engine turns over. So it's not a set in stone number. It is a bit of a variable, but it will give you a pretty good idea approximately where you should be. And we're going to go into these other camshafts and how they affect the dynamic compression and, you know, in turn, the cranking compression as well. So, our stock LT camshaft, like I said, is about 9 to 1 dynamic. It pumps about 190 cranking. Why don't we say stay with the small cams if you're staying with stock compression? Our SS1 LT cam essentially closes the intake valve about the same time as the factory camshaft. Um, it maintains that 9 0 dynamic and 190 cranking compression. So, this cam really doesn't um, have any trade-off or bleed too much cylinder pressure off uh, for a stock compression setup. 
but on, as you go up from there, um, you are going to have uh, a reduction in dynamic compression, which is going to hurt your power, uh, especially in the lower RPM mid-range. Um, you may pick up some peak horsepower with it, but you're not going to see quite the gains you would if you had an optimal um, package combination that had the DCR up there uh, higher. Um, so the SS2 LT, you know, it drops it down to about 8.9 dynamic compression and it pumps about 185 approximately. So you think, well, that's not that big of a difference. And, and it's still pretty suitable for stock compression uh, setups, especially the street strip guys that aren't just max effort swinging for the fence. That camshaft works well. Uh, and, you know, it, it, either one of these camshafts will work well with increased compression. Um, and we're going to get into that here a little bit more in a bit. Um, the SS3 LT camshaft, one of our most popular camshafts, but it's important to note that this camshaft makes it to the point where it's big enough that it really starts bleeding off some dynamic compression and you know the cranking compression starts to suffer some and we see that this camshaft on stock compression engines um, doesn't quite offer uh, any gains honestly over the smaller camshafts in the upper rpms and it just suffers more down low because you blood all your cylinder pressure off in comparison. So the SS3 is where we kind of start saying, hey, this is where you want to, uh, this is where you want to start, you know, considering putting a thin head gasket on or milling a little bit to at least get back up to the factory dynamic compression ratio. Um, so the combination doesn't suffer and it's not lazy. So a quick recap. The SS1 through the SS3 lineup all will work um, with factory compression. The 3 is the point where you start getting some, uh, you know, the returns start getting smaller and smaller, or the gains, I should say. This is where you want to start considering um, bumping that compression up. Um, all three of these camshafts are set up where you can either mill or have a small combination of milling and a thin gasket or just run a thinner gasket to help with that uh, DCR. Um, so just reach out to us and, and we'll try to get some, uh, some information on your setup and, and determine uh, what we can do and still maintain adequate piston and valve clearance. Uh, that's something, you know, it's always good to check that as a practice to make sure. And that's, that's the main thing we fight against and why we don't mill the heads on everything and run thin gaskets on everything. You know, I mean, you guys need to check your piston to valve clearance and make sure we've got room to work um, in there, you know, so we don't have any interference issues. The SS4 LT and bigger camshafts, just because they'll fit and run without any fly cutting, don't do it. Just don't do it. Fly cut, mill, and run thin gaskets. These camshafts need compression. I wouldn't even think about running these camshafts if I was less than 13 to 1 compression static. Uh, and the, the bigger, the, like the track attack and the high ram uh, track attack, those camshafts need, you need 14 to 1 plus for those camshafts. They're, they're great for what they're designed for, but they are not camshafts for your 93 octane um, 11 and a half or 12 to 1 engine. I mean, it's just, that's not what they're designed for. They're designed to turn high RPM and uh, you need a bunch of compression to be able to run those camshafts. Uh, the LTNFC cam, the, the no fly cut cam, you notice uh, in the description of it, we say mill 40 and run 40 gaskets as a minimum. Uh, this cam was designed with basically very little, no overlap, uh, to free up that uh, valuable piston to valve clearance to be able to run this cam at an increased compression ratio uh, to keep customers from having to fly cut. This camshaft does give up a little power versus the camshafts like the SS4 or the Track Attack uh, and maybe even the SS3 in some combinations depending on what that compression ratio is because it doesn't have the overlap. But the trade-off is 
uh, convenience. You don't have to fly cut, and drivability is immaculate with this camshaft with no overlap. So, you know, you can you guys can lean on us to, to help recommend you the best option for your setup. Um, there are tons, and we do tons of custom cam applications, and uh, this is just uh, scratching the surface on some of this stuff. So, you know, back to the design aspect here, now that we've talked about DCR and why the compression is so important in, in terms of making power on the DI engine, what determines where camshaft wants to go RPM wise? You know, how high is this thing gonna wanna spin? Aside from the valve train setup, let's take that out of the equation. Let's say you have the valve train and the induction setup uh, that, that will support 8,000 RPMs. Um, you can't take a camshaft like an SS1 and expect to make peak power at you know 7,500 RPMs. The intake valve closes too early. So the main uh, factors for a camshaft that are going to want to RPM is going to be the intake valve closing and the exhaust valve opening points. And um, the later you close that intake valve, the IVC, the later that event is, the more it bleeds off cylinder pressure. But the more it's going to want to RPM, uh, and it's a necessity. You know, you have to close the valve later. So we combat that by putting more static compression ratio in there. If we bleed our DCR down to 8.7, we're going to have to bump that static up to get that up to where we want it. Um, and this will give you some, some guidelines kind of on our more aggressive setups, what we like. Um, most of our track attack and high rim um, camshaft applications, we're running, even on stop bottom end stuff, in between 14 and 15 to 1 static compression. On E85, of course, mostly. We have tried Q16 and some race fuels on a few of them, but the E85 seems to be a bit better on the DI engine. This usually equates with these camshafts to about 10.4 to 10.5 dynamic compression, and these things pump really anywhere between 220 and 240 cranking compression. Um, the high ram track attack cam, like it's in uh, Brandon Hill and Corey West blue car, uh, those things are 14 and a half to one range and 10.4 dynamic, they pump about 230 to give you a reference. Uh, pump gas wise on the DI engine, you can get up there around you know, nine and a half, close to 10 to one uh, dynamic on pump gas, 93 octane pump gas. But your tuning window really starts tightening up there. You know, they're gonna be more sensitive to ignition timing. And so you really have to be careful as you start pushing that static compression up to get that dynamic up around, um, you know, 10 to one range on pump gas is what, what I would say. And I'm not saying you can't go beyond that, you can. It's just gonna take some careful uh, consideration and some, you know, some, some good tuning to, to make it work well. Uh, the E85 and race fuel stuff, you can get that stuff, you can crank it on up there, 10 plus. I will say, uh, we've tried some stuff here on some builds. I've had some stuff in the 250 to 260 range, cranking compression, and uh, when in, a, in a race only application where the engine's always cool, it never sees more than 150, 160 degrees. It works okay, uh, but in a street driven application, even on E85 or C85 or one ethanol, nice barrel uh, E85, um, it's too much compression and you're right on the edge of uh, detonation at light throttle. Um, higher load areas at, at light throttle, low RPM, where you don't have that wide open throttle fuel enrichment. Um, the engines don't seem to like that low RPM when you get them up around the, you know, 10, 6, 10, 7 dynamic range up there, 250, 260 cranking. Uh, they're really sensitive. I'm not saying you can't run race application stuff there in certain situations, but I wouldn't put together a, um, a driven uh, street application in that range. So I hope this information was beneficial for you guys in, in, in understanding why we say don't overcam your engine. You know, 
If you want to put all the camshaft in it, that's cool. Let's put all the converter and all the compression in it, and it's going to be mean. But if you want to stay mild and be able to run 93 pump gas, let's look at some of these other smaller options that make more sense for what you're wanting to do and will have your combination happier, and you won't end up upset because of things lazy and won't get out of its own way. So, as always, you guys hit us up if you have any questions or comments. Um, drop some comments, leave us some feedback, and uh, the next uh, installment will be coming up soon. Thank you, guys.